Hello students. Here I am back to do continue with my lecture on pheromones. As you know, I have done two lectures of pheromones. And uh, let me introduce me first. I am Indu Yadav from Samrat Prithviraj Chauhan Government College, Ajmer, and I am uh, doing paper 18, that is animal behavior, and. Uh, uh, the topic I'm going to take is from unit 2 and uh, it's uh, point 3 in unit 2 and the topic is animal communication through chemicals and these chemicals are obviously pheromones. Now I will do the third lecture in which I will take a start with the fourth point which I had told you in the introduction that my uh, lecture will consist of these points. In that, I'm going to start with fourth point, and it is the structures sensitive to pheromones. Now, as you can see on the slide, the you, you, you are able to see the diagram. Uh, actually, it, it is a diagram from the last lecture and it, it, uh, because I have clicked photographs from my notes, so it has come extended into this slide. Uh, in this diagram, I had done the glands which are present in the body of the ant. So don't get confused with this diagram and let's continue with the structures sensitive to pheromones. At the end of the 18th century, the great Swiss entomologist August Forel found various organs on an ant's antennae which seemed by their structures to be particularly well adapted for reacting to chemicals. In some animals like insects, these structures are flat. Some have cup shaped structures, some are short stubby hair like and all these structures are supplied with nerves. The pheromones are sensed by these structures and the messages are sent to central nervous system. The male silk moth also receives the stimulus of pheromones by antenna. There are found two specialized sensory structures on the surface of its antenna. Now these two structures, again uh, this is the problem of uh, clicking photographs from the notes, uh, the, in the notes the uh, uh, diagram is given in the end of the topic and uh, let me show it to you. Here is the diagram and you can see it, this is the structure, it's a, a large structure of the antennae. Like you can see in the in top region of the diagram, this is the uh, structure of male antenna. And one of its hair-like structure is uh, enlarged and you can see there are two types of uh, sensory organs. Sensory, siloconical, pit-like and short structures and rod-like sensory which are known as basiconical. So basically there are two types of sensory structures, siloconical and basiconical. The, in the diagram, the word sinoconical conical is not coming. I uh, have written pit-like because sinoconical means pit-like. So, this was about the structures sensitive to pheromones. Now, next comes the pheromones as sex attractants. Now, let me go back to my previous slide. And here is the one which I am going to deal with now. Pheromones as sex attractants. Pheromones are employed by a large number of insects in bringing the sexes together for mating. These pheromones are known as sex attractants. Now these pheromones as sex attractants may be of two forms. They may be in the female insects and they may be in the male insects also. So let us do it one by one. Pheromones of female insects. Pheromones by female insects are released by exposing the glands by movements of abdomen. Normally, 
scent is released at particular times of the day for instance males of lobesia uh, which come in lepidoptera are only attracted by the females from 4 pm to midnight while heliothis again a lepidopteran these males are attracted to females from 4 am to daylight the effect of scent is to excite the male and to promote takeoff in nature the female uses her powerful pheromones to advertise her presence over a large area when males are activated they simply fly from here to there eventually as they approach the female there is a slight increase in the concentration of the chemical attractant and this can serve as a guide for the remaining distance queen of honey bee also attracts a male by a pheromone the principal component of which is 9 oxadocinoic acid produced in the mandibular gland uh, in the and you know where is the mandibular gland we have done it before it is in the situated in the mandible mandible is a mouth part of the insects and uh, at the base of this mandible is present the mandibular gland the power of insect attractant is almost unbelievable most acute sense of smell exhibited in nature is that of the male emperor moth Eudia pavonia the male uh, zoological name of male emperor moth is Eudia pavonia which according to experiments conducted in germany in 1961 can detect the sex attractant of the female at the range of 6 to 8 miles. This scent has identified this scent has been identified as one of the higher alcohols whose formula is C16H29OH of which female carries less than 0.001 of milligram so you can imagine how less the amount is and still it is so powerful to attract the males from miles apart and not one not two six to eight miles Next comes the pheromones of males. There are few instances of male producing sex attractants. This is true of the male beetle Harpobitecus. In this, after the male has caught its prey and started to feed, two vesicles are inverted from between the posterior abdominal segments these cycles expand and contract and the scent is released which attracts the females on her arrival the male copulates and presents her the remaining of his prey so this was all about the pheromones as sex attractants and today in this lecture I have covered two points the fourth point which is the structure sensitive to pheromones and the fifth point pheromones as sex attractants so this is enough for now and I will be back with my fourth lecture on pheromones thank you